Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember we're, we're here, here for, for you, and, and we've got your back. Forty-second anniversary, Back to the Future is our theme, Conquering Generations, Conquering Generations, Past, Present, and Future. Now, I want to say this, 42 is a number of generations that came from Abraham to Jesus the Christ, 42 generations. 42 degrees is the critical angle light that will cause us to see a rainbow. Now, I didn't know this. I just got to Google it, so don't think I'm that deep, okay? The world's first printed book, guess what? The Gutenberg Bible has 42 lines per page. Jackie Robinson, who made history being the first African-American baseball player in the um, professional, I should say, the National League of Baseball, wore the number 42. And for some of you uh, star people, like with Starship and that, that particular show, the Enterprise Starship had 42 decks. Thought I'd throw that in. But this is the one I like. The number 42 means instigating and driving through changes. Hallelujah, God, Hallelujah, you're so good. God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Happy anniversary. Happy 42nd anniversary to More Than Conquerors Faith Church. I've been a member of it for 37 years, and I've enjoyed every last minute of it. And I thank God for all that he's going to do from this, this day forward. Happy anniversary, More Than Conquerors. Happy anniversary. And many more to come. Why? Because God is so good. He's been so good to us. He took us from the bottom to the, now we're here. We, we on the top now. We're living on the top. We're living on the top. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our king. Hallelujah, God. You're so good. You're so good, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, God. So good. Lord, you are good. Yes. Your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are good. Yes. Your mercy endures forever. Say it again. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are good. Yeah. Your mercy endures forever. God, you are so good. Lord, you You are so good. Yes, you 
you are. God, you are so good. Yeah.
Conqueror's Faith Church. Been here in the Birmingham community and make an incredible impact uh, of West End area for 42 years, inviting everyone to come and celebrate uh, with them. Joining us now is my friend uh, Steve Green, pastor of the church. It's so great to see you. Friends get you, together. You are right? uh, you're a sight for sore <laughs> eyes, I promise you. Well, I feel you the that. same way. The yeah. feeling is mutual of yeah. the lamb, David well, Lamb. Well, thank I'll be you. holding the lamb of God today. <laughs> Well, you're too yes. kind. So, yes. so tell us, you guys, uh, one of the things I love about you yeah. and your church is you're yes. always forward thinking and you got a vision for the community and you, you do things so well. So tell me about this celebration and the theme this year. The More Than Conquerors was birthed in 1982, 42 years ago. Wow. I know that'll be easier for our audience to remember. 42. 42. 42. 42. Yeah, 42. <laughs> so uh, 42 years ago, and our mission has always been to reach our community because we believe that uh, people don't care how much you know, they want to know how much you care. Yeah. And that we were to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works. Mm -hmm. Not meritology, right. but they would see our good works and give God the glory. So we wanted to pay it forward. Yes. What, what was, what mattered 42 years ago? What, what was important 42 years ago? What was the driving force then that remains so today? I think people, keeping people the main thing, mm -hmm. that not, you don't believe your own press. Right. that you not condemn people and show them the love of God mm. and the, know that you have no right to look down on a man. The only time is when you're picking them up. And at the same time, especially but not limited to the African-American community, right. uh, it seemed like there was not a whole lot of knowledge of reading the scripture, logo, you know, homiletically. Mm -hmm. And so we want to bring the mentality up and teach the word of God and empower them to know that our enemy was, you know, Birmingham has a storied history, yeah. that it was not the Caucasian that we were wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against power, that they would be diligent, right. that God would reward them. And, mm -hmm. and, and we've seen Birmingham make a, come a long way. As you look back over these 42 years, what, what, what makes your heart most grateful? You know, to think that God uses ordinary people mm -hmm. and to see the evolution of Birmingham. I've been an eyewitness. I grew up in Birmingham. And to see the first African-American uh, uh, from, from where I said, you know, uh, uh, Mayor Richard Arrington, and right. to see the Regent Park and the uh, railroad parks, and just to see how far we've come, and even as a city working together on so many projects, and and to even see old friends like yourself staying the course. I mean that with no sense of flattery. You you got to be inspired by others, and so when I wake up and I see you doing the news, and I, and I see people from every tongue, every tribe, and every nation mm -hmm. pursuing their dream. With no barriers. Yeah, tell me, we're less than a minute remaining. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we plug this event. Okay. So tell me what's happening. Well, we're celebrating in five phases. Uh, the vision casting, of course, that'll be the church. Mm -hmm. But this coming Sunday, you know, we got the praise. I mean, it's right. been good to us. And then uh, that community at St. John Baptist Church 521, it'll be uh, in conjunction with uh, community awareness, uh, uh, awareness. We're calling it the Village Week. Uh, giving resources to our community. So it's just uh, five days. They can go on our uh, five events. They can go on our website. Yeah. Come join us. And we're inviting everybody to come back. We call it yeah. Back to the Future Conquering Generations. 42 is the number of generations. How about Jesus that? came through 17 generations three times. And uh, that's what we want to do. We yeah. want to reach our generation. Yeah. And, and so you're with the website and social media, just More Than Conquerors? Yes, More Than Conquerors, uh, mtfc.org. And call us at 205-322. 2644 at any time and go on Facebook, yeah. like us on Facebook, and you'll get all the information. Don't just come down Denison Avenue. Yeah. Denison, did not yeah. sign. Well, the sun <laughs> looked like he's been denied, but I don't Denison. We lift him up at more than Congress. You still got the passion, hey, don't you? I better. You yeah, got it. No, uh, you got it. I, hey, I learned from the best. <laughs> And congratulations oh, to you on your well, assignments and awards that well, you're very 42 kind. is the better for having you being well, the anchor, I tell kind. you that. You're very kind. I appreciate it. And yes. look forward to this event, More Than Conquerors Faith Church, 42nd anniversary. Wow. That's just amazing. Taking place yeah. July 24th through mm. August 10th. Details yes. on our website as well. It's always yes. great to see you. Thank you so much, You David. Uh, yes. I love your encouragement and always uh, bringing the passion. A little encouraging words, what we all need. All right. Yeah. <laughs>
the branches, he who abides in me will forever be fruitful in me. I am the way, the truth and the light. No one gets to the Father except that he comes through me. So let not mercy and truth. We say forsake you. Say forsake you. Let not mercy and truth. We say forsake you. Say forsake you. Say we really got to.
a new generation I'm talking about in the natural 2025 starts a new generation how prophetic is this house declaring con conquering generations the year 2025 starts a new generation called the beta generation And our part, our part is critical. This house to continue to create moments, this sanctified spot, even in your home, your jobs, it's a sanctified spot where you create a moment for God to open the heavens beam down his presence so that he can speak to his people amen church critical assignment Jesus Jesus, 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 there is something about that name, Jesus, 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 
has to come. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something special about the name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Genesis, Jesus is it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something special. homes. Some are in jail cells. Some in military. They're, they're connected to us because of the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood Please, please, the blood of Jesus. Please, 
not only do we plead it, uh, something happened. We recognize this. We need the blood of Jesus. Need the blood. Need the blood of Jesus. If we're going to overcome, if we're going to conquer, Revelation 12 says, uh, and they overcame, but they conquered by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's how they conquer. If we ever needed the blood, we need the blood of Jesus. Something happened. right there for a moment just right there you've been standing and celebrating but just for a moment right there my Bible teaches me before there can be a launching or sending forth because I'm about to launch you and launch some things this place is about to become a launching pad everybody say a launching pad I know it's around 12 noon tell somebody he didn't say a lunch pad uh, this is not about peanut butter and jelly or your favorite salad the Lord assured me that this will be a launching pad and you will be like a rocket I'm in my notes already this will be a NASA experience Hold that hand tight for a moment. NASA, I think that's the place where they find the launching site. And from that launching pad, they send a rocket up into stratospheres. And their mission, as I'm going to be talking about in a moment, mission unstoppable. I was just watching the Education Network one morning on a Saturday. They have special education for the children, and one of the specials is called Mission Unstoppable. I need you to look at somebody with Holy Ghost boldness and say, you're about to go on a mission, and there is not a devil in hell will be able to stop where you're about to go. I think we have a rocket behind me eh, in a moment. That rocket is getting ready to go off as a launching pad. And when the launching, when the rocket goes up, it has its whole body. But by the time the launching pad, the launching off takes place, there's a countdown. And there must be first a launching pad and a site. Everybody say, you're in the launching pad site right now. It's called the church. Launching rockets do not go lateral sideways. They go straight up. Look at your name and say, you're getting ready to go straight up in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're not going to die. Ain't nothing going down but the devil. That's the reason I'm not, I was thinking when I heard this in prayer, I thought I was going to count you down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. No, but God says, no, you're not going to have a countdown. You're going to have a count up. When I get to 10, you're going to shout because too many people then counted you down long enough. Oh, you might as well go ahead and turn that hand loose for a moment. Uh, come on, they done counted you down. Don't, don't, don't go nowhere. Stand right there. Everybody say, it's getting ready to count up. And you do count up when you're playing that old child game, hide and go see. You don't go 50, 45, 35, 30. 30, 25, 20, 15. Hide and seek. Now you count up if you know that God is hiding something and you got to go seek it. 
I dare you to look at somebody and say, God is hiding something for you. And what eyes have not seen, uh, what ears have never heard, uh, is getting ready if you will seek the Lord. Can I get my part started? Uh, you had, with the launching, they had to have a launching site, a launching pad, and they had to have some astronauts. I wonder, do I have any, I ain't talking about Carrie's favorite team. I wonder if I have any astronauts. Astro means the stars. I'm not talking about what you are not. I'm talking about astronauts. Those that count God, not just by the miles, but they count, you, you measure space by nautical measurements, N-A-U-T-I-C. How many of you getting ready to measure? See, if you were if you were going laterally to Atlanta, about 150 miles, you but what if you get ready to go up? How far is the next level of of, of height you're about to go? How high are you about to go? You're about to go higher! You got to have a launching pad. You got to have a launching site. And the launching site is the church. And you can't come here playing cute. I heard Brother Stanley saying that when you get ready to praise him, you ought to praise him for the activity of your limbs. And I lost it right there. And he had you like only Stanley could do. He said, I dare, he, he said, I dare you to act like you got activity. Don't do it yet because some of you are already ready to start. And he said, start leaping. But I ain't never seen nobody leap this way. When you leap, you go up and down. If you know you got activity, not on just your physical limb, your arm, but everything that's connected to you, every part of this body is going up with you. I want you, before I do a shout, I want you on the count of three, use all your limbs. If you can't do them above your head up and down, but if you can get, leap off your feet, uh, if you know ain't no God like Jehovah, behold he comes. Uh, I want you to leap on the count of three. One, two, three, leap now. Uh, leap now. Uh, leap now like you're going straight up. Uh, leap now. Uh, come on. Uh, like you're going straight up. Uh, like you are like a man at the gate called beautiful, sitting there uh, begging. Uh, tell somebody this is not a begging season. Uh, not for you, uh, because you're the mess of men. Uh, given the prayer, uh, just came out of the upper room, uh, and they said, uh, "What you about to do uh, has nothing to do with your money, uh, silver and gold. Uh, Hell, I not, uh, but in the name of Jesus, uh, get up." Uh, and walk uh, get up uh, and walk uh, and the bible says uh, he start walking uh, then he start praising uh, and then he start leaping uh, every apostle that's worth the salt in his bread uh, will cause you to leap uh, by your god uh, you will run through a troop uh, and everybody will lose your head and you will leap over a wall uh, Look at your neighbor and say, I leaped for myself about a minute ago, huh? but this next leap is for you and your children. One, two, three, leap for your neighbor. Huh? Leap for their house. Huh? Leap for their protection. Huh? Leap for their healing. Huh? Leap for their destiny. Huh? Leap for their anointing. Huh? Leap when your poverty is broken. Huh? Leap when your Alzheimer is broken. Huh? Leap. Huh? The cerebral palsy is broken. Uh, I want to start this next reel uh, with a healing anointing. We're getting ready to count up. I was in prayer. It'll be in my notes in a moment. Uh, but 
I heard the Lord said this was a NASA experience. I said, NASA Bahamas? He said, no, NASA Kingdom. And I remembered and I studied. Because on most Sundays, uh, I don't open the Bible before I take my notes. I just write down what he's saying. And I heard God say it was going to be a NASA. And he took me back to 30 years ago. I was studying Isaiah 53 that talks about reports that you don't need to believe. It said, who has believed our report? Hang with me, let's read that. And to whom uh, is the arm of the Lord revealed? I dare you to tell somebody, God's about to flex his muscles on your behalf. <laughs> Isaiah 53, 1. Who has believed the report of our Lord? Let's go down again. They didn't get all of that. Say that again. Who has believed our report? Let's bring that on the screens if it's possible. I want those at home to see because I'm about to release NASA out of this verse. Somebody said, I never saw NASA in Isaiah 53. You're about to see it now. You're about to see it now. Isaiah 53. Wait, is it possible if it's not for them to get Isaiah 53 on this screen on the left? Keep the rocket behind me if that is possible. If that is possible. Isaiah 53. Let's go ahead. We'll let them. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I've heard about revelation knowledge. Preachers preach a lot about revelation knowledge. That means something they didn't see in the scripture. But I don't hear nobody preaching about revelation arms. You about to get a revelation arm today. To whom is the arm of the Lord? Uh, you about to see the muscle power of God today. To whom? Everybody say, it's to us. That's who it is. Us. To whom is the what now? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him. Oh, he grew up. Yes, before him. He grew up before him. So MTC is not the only one that grew up. We grew up one time. We are grown twice, aren't we? The, the legal age of growth is 18 or 21. So we grew up one time, 21 years. We grew up again. We didn't grow up twice. We got a double portion of grownness. He shall grow up before him. Before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground. See, if you're going to do something phenomenal for God... You got to do something where the ground is already dry. I bless God for every new church. We're not boasting, but when MDC came along, the ground and the soil was dry. The environment is saturated now, but it was a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when See, he this is what people get MDC messed up, Elder Stewart. They want us to have form. Three points, succinct, oratorical skills, stand up, speak up, and shut up. That's form. But I also read in Timothy, nothing kills the power of God like form does. You can have a form of godliness. But deny the power thereof. Either I can give you form for the next 42 years, and you can be out of church by 1230 if I gave you form. But where the kingdom of darkness is about to go, you're going to need more than a form letter. You're going to need the power of God. Somebody say, I welcome the power of God. He had what now? When he no was form. growing up, he had what? No form, no form, nor comeliness, nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. See, if people want you too much, you might not be the real thing. Church growth, people desiring you might be a sign that you are preaching the wrong thing. You are most effective when you are undesirable. when don't nobody want you but Jesus 
when you get everybody else out of your way and your situation is so ugly that there is no beauty in you. Your resume is tore up. Your church is tore up. Your marriage is tore up. There is no beauty. I'm setting you up for NASA. There was no beauty about Jesus. No pomp, no splendor. He was in a manger. Nobody desired him. But he kept growing up. And he was very tender. Which means it could be destroyed easily. Keep going. He is despised and rejected of men. See, now if, if you can't participate in this countdown if everybody like you if don't nobody despise you I ain't talking to you if you have not been rejected you can't qualify for what I'm about to do you have to be despised and rejected they don't want you they don't want your talent they don't want your church somebody has to reject you A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. A man of one sorrow. Sorrows. Acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. You see what happens, people? When you're really qualified, people start not joining you, but hiding from you. You got too much grief going on. You got too much despising going on. We're not in a popularity contest. I'm headed toward NASA. I know, I know you want this. I ain't just talking about the church. The best thing that can happen is when you get a bunch of folk don't like you. When they persecute you and say all manner of things against you falsely, like you're a cult. You taking all the money. I'm like Charles is taking all the money. In 1982, we ain't have no money. We no money to take. this I'm just giving you time to catch your breath because you get me I'm about to count you up here what happened he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he has borne our oh grief. there NASA is there NASA is did you see NASA there don't lie did you see NASA right there everything before then led you to a NASA do you see NASA in that word no tell the truth I know most of you don't the word born, look it up in the Hebrew of Strong's Concordance, and you will find the Hebrew word is NASA, wow. N-A-S-A, which means because you were not like, because you've been, de uh, been despised, because God's arm, he's getting ready to cause you to go airborne. Whoa. Oh my God. Born to bear something is to carry it. What the Lord told me to tell you, MTC, that He is going to be your number one carrier. Not Southwest, not Delta. He is one that's going to help you to carry your load. And He told me to remind you that He is not going to lose your baggage. He is not going to separate you from your baggage. You can bring all your baggage and put it up in the overhead. It's not going to be under the plane. It's not going to be on another plane. You can bring your baggage with you. Because he's a baggage carrier. church told me was true. The Lord would not put more on you than you can bear. He's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load chair. And every day and then, every time the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the heels they get hard to climb. 22 years, but I started out. It was a long time ago. And even today, there is no doubt. Not 
Daniel Mama! you had time to catch your breath will you stand with me one more time because we're getting ready for the lift off now and the astronauts would be going on a mission tell somebody you're getting ready to go on a mission and I'm going to give you several effects of this mission part of their mission was to take satellites SAT they would take a satellite and place it in a heavenly place and what would happen with that satellite will control what's happening in the earth realm tell somebody you about to hit a satellite i'm gonna hit that sat satellite and it's gonna color everything from your being satified saturated saturday sat scores sat i know they ain't doing no much but every score you trying to take it's going insatiable it's going to be something in this satellite it's not going to matter where you sat yesterday because god's about to change your seat baby people would go down to cape canaveral florida and places in texas and they just sit there and just watch it go up I got a few examples that this is scripturally possible. Enoch became an astronaut and went straight up because he was walking with God. Genesis 5. Did he do it? He walked with God. He wasn't an astronaut. The Bible said he was not. He wasn't a cosmonaut going to just the circle of the world. Genesis 5, 24 said, Enoch was not. It is not going to matter what you are not. When God says, Steve Green, I'm getting ready to bless you around the world in every media outlet. I say, God, I do not have education. I do not have 
the, the morality and the perfect nothing. God said it won't matter what you are not because whatever you are not, I am that I am. Elijah became an astronaut. And he told Elisha, if you can see me when I go up, I'll give you a double portion. Yeah, yeah. And he went up right before their eyes. Look at your neighbor, say, you're getting ready to go up right before my eyes. And it's not going to matter what you are not. You may not be wealthy. You may not be righteous. You may not be holy. But God is holy. God is wealthy. As he is, so are we. The last case was Jesus himself. After he had talked to his disciples for 50 days about the kingdom of God. In Acts 1.11, said they watched him go straight up as an astronaut. And he asked them, why stand you here gazing? Tell somebody you done stared at me for the last time. What you looking at? Because I'm getting ready to go straight up into another place and leave my evidence as a satellite in the heavens. I'm on a mission, and the mission is called Unstoppable. In the next 42 years, ain't a devil in hell going to be able to stop you or your children. I know you. I, don't get ahead of countdown. It burned two-thirds of the body, and all they had was the fuselage. I was it. We had that meeting in the capsule. You got to understand this, beloved, before I count you up. When Jesus went up, the first problem that those men out of the upper room encountered after being on fire on the day of Pentecost was somebody tried to contain their fire. What I need to do before we go any further since we in this room and filled with the Holy Ghost, I need to make sure we ain't got no firemen in the room that will try to put your fire out. See, people can put your fire out by a look, by packing up, or act like you ain't saying nothing, but tell somebody either you're going to have to move this next year or I'm going to move because I ain't sitting next to no firemen. I just can't afford to it. If you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. If you don't want to shout, don't hinder me. And the Bible said when they got ready to go up, there appeared to them in that room cloven tongues as a fire. And that was the beginning of the church, right? That's when the church got started, right? In the day of Pentecost. And soon as they did a miracle, watch this. If a person can't put all the fire out, you know what they say if there's a forest fire? We got the fires contained. See, what has happened to the church in the 21st century is we got contained fires. We ain't put it all the way out, but we got it under control. Uh, but you need to tell somebody, you will not be able to control me this realm. Your looks, your watches will not. Your critics will not. Uh, you will not be able to control this fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, stir that up. Before we count y'all, come on, act like you're in the day of Pentecost. Uh, hey, let me hear you pray in the Holy Ghost. Let me hear sound in this room. I can't hear you. Let me hear sound of prayer. You can't go in Jerusalem. You can't go in Judea. You can't go to Samaria until you first been in the upper room. And the Bible said, uh, when they came out, there were men everywhere. From Cappadocia, Phrygia, Libya, from everywhere. Isn't it amazing, by the way? Keep praying, the Holy Ghost. Isn't it amazing 
at the time, the same time uh, that you are having your anniversary, the world is gathering together in one place for the Olympics. Isn't it a worldwide moment right now? It is a moment of world gathering right now. People from every tongue, every tribe, every nation uh, is started in Eden. Uh, but at this present time, uh, it is a global athletic moment. And they say the men on the outside heard what was happening on the inside and said, what are they talking about? And they say, we do hear them talking our own language, the wonderful works of God. Will you grab somebody's hands up and lift it up right now? But someone who said, Tantanpaha. Obedience is better than sacrifice. This is not a standalone moment. Everybody needs to be connected. Come on, 30 seconds. And when they heard him, Acts 2.11 said on the screen, Acts 2.11 said, we do hear them speaking the wonderful works of God. I'm getting ready to count you up. And when they came out of the room full of power, they met a man that had diseases, not for the last three years, but conditions in the body were healed from birth. Every condition in the morning conquers the body that had been crippled or hampered be healed now in every place from the trustees to the elders to the deacons to every department since 1982. Be healed! Be healed! Be healed! Be healed! In your occupation! Be healed! In your homes! In your marriages! In your children! The man, Acts 3 said, was crippled since birth! We do have some birthmarks, don't we? We do have some birth defects, don't we? MDC! Yeah, we got some birth defects, but so do you! But we also got the birth marks! He marked us for this generation! They grabbed that man, lift that hand up! And said, in the name of Jesus, Dr. Stewart, that man needed a pediatrician. No, he needed a Dr. Stewart in the last years of her ministry. That she'll do more miracles in the next 10 years than she's done in the whole 45 years. Babies will be healed before the fever would go out before you could even get the thermometer in.
the lift off. I'm ahead of myself. Any medical doctors in this room, move now. I'm going to lay my hands. I know there's several go here. I want to lay my hands because you're going to be critical in this next move of God. You're going to help combat COVID. If you're optometrist, if you are, come on, yeah, don't turn those hands. In the name of Jesus, I release healing. We ain't going to just be talking about COVID in the next realm. If you are in the medical provision, and you are a nurse, RN or LPN, I'm about to lift you off. I'm going to count y'all. If you're in any form of medical, you got to move quickly. Don't, this service is not over. This service is not over. This service is not over. That's, there's healing. Everybody talked about COVID, Dr. Fauci. It won't be about the White House. It's going to be about what came out of the church house this, in this next realm. There are plagues coming that only elders in the house will be able to get the report. Move, if you have medical, medical, you're about to lift off. They're going to be calling for you. I ain't even in the countdown, medical. Going to be looking like sometimes you're going to have to say, physician, heal yourself. But I had to learn how to preach the gospel when I was healing myself. But there's healing in your head. Somebody said, Jesus. Only those that had the medical, 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 nursing, right? You're going to go in, see the, the devil owe you a few miracles. You're going to just walk in the room and, and, and the condition's going to start changing because you are an airborne. You're about to go airborne. A-I-R or H-E-I-R. You're in air salvation and things that they can't carry. You have proven that you can carry heavy loads that others cannot. Jesus. Oh my God, I'm already in the healing. Jesus, miracles in your practice. Optometrist, ophthalmologist, God, coma. Double vision. I'm just praying for those on the front line because I'm sensing another realm of signs and wonders. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it's on you. You're, you're a carrier. He had born. You're a NASA. NASA is a carrier. You carry the glory out of the church into your carrier. Your carrier, NASA. Surely he had born. You were carried, born to bury. You were bear healing in your hand, the residual, when you touch it. I'm in Isaiah 53. Here's what it says. Surely he has born our sicknesses. If I could keep the scriptures on the side and keep the rocket in front of me. I want that picture of the rocket. If, I know I ask a lot. So I want to keep that visual. When you read Isaiah 53, I want to keep the visual of the rocket before me. Keep the words off the screen if, if it's possible behind me. Just the rocket if that's possible. Will you read it for me? Surely he has borne our grief. Our grief? And carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded. He was wounded. He was buried when he took off. In Acts 11, what he was carrying was healing. Healing for the nations. 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 He has done what now? But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with In his, his stripes, stripes we are healed. He was an astronaut and took healing straight up into the heaven. Somebody say healing in your hands, in your pharmaceutical understanding. You're a carrier of the prescriptions of God. What? 
for those as hell in grief. He carried our sorrow. As a matter of fact, when I get to lay hands on all these people, I want every one of you in the medical profession to come back with me and line up on these steps. And you're going to release healing to the whole body of this. Because oh, that's going to be the number one thing we're battling with. Look at all this healing coming to Now I need everyone in here. Standards. Okay, we obviously didn't understand what I asked. I want the rocket behind me on this screen. The rocket behind me if that's possible unless it's frozen. I want the scriptures on this screen. I'm just under authority, guys. I don't mean to be made. I'm looking for what I'm looking for. I need the standards to step up a step all the way to the top. I need everyone that I just pray for, the doctors that come stand behind me. Because we're going to lift off. I'm about to count the people up. If you'll just step there. You want to stand there facing. I pray for about 20, y'all. Fight it up. I pray for more people than this. Split it up. I know I pray. Come on back up quickly. I talked about the doctrine of laying on of hands last week. I want you to, you're about to release some power out of you, out of your knowledge of what goes on with disease that you can't explain. I want y'all spread out, spread out. Don't be scared. Just spread out. Don't be spread out, spread out. Spread out, spread out, spread out. It's a visual. It's a, hey, guys. My call to preach is about demonstrations. My speech and preaching is not with the oratorical skills, but it's in the demonstration of the Spirit. And with power that I face should not stand. So I need to demonstrate this, so I call it get the demonstrate. There is so much power in your knowledge of understanding of medicines and prescription. I want you, when I count them up, not only will their money go up, their health is going to go up. The their infant mortality rate is going to go up. Are y'all ready for the count up? Until we get 100% whole. Five, 10, 15, 20, everybody just stand. 25, 30. First in my eyes with the countdown. 35, 40. 45, 50. I'm counting you up. I'm going to lift off. 55, 60. 65, 70. When I get 100, all of you health care professionals, stretch your hands. 65, 70. 75, 80. 85, 80. 95, 100. Lift off now. Lift off now. Lift off. Jesus. Lift off now.
Somebody, everybody give the Lord a hand of praise for a NASA mission.
You are about to witness and be blessed by the ministry of the More Than Conquerors Faith Church and Pastor Stephen Green Sr. This service was preordained and designed with you in mind. Now, be empowered as you enjoy the word of the Lord and you enter the sanctuary as Pastor Green delivers this prophetic word of victory. My name is Regina Taylor, and I've been with More Than Conquerors Faith Church for 41 years. Um, it was December 17, 1981. So with that, I ended up meeting a young lady who was the vice president's secretary. So they invited me to the Bible study, and in inviting me to the Bible study, I got to meet a whole lot of people, uh, like Elder Dwayne Davis. I was able to meet him. Uh, some of the other ministers at that time. We were a bunch of young people uh, trying to find out about the Lord, just wanted to know more about Him and was excited about other, telling other people about Jesus. I found out that they were actually having services at the Howard Johnson on Green Springs. My name is Laura Jackson. I've been a member of that church since Pastor Green took over the ministry. I had visited the church on, on Green Springs and I liked it and I started visiting them more because I had been taught differently about the whole spirit. When I heard Dwayne Pastor G talking about the spirit of God and the Holy Spirit, there's three in one, I said, hmm. That's where I need to be. Like I said, I went back to my own church, but I couldn't get the same. So that's my reason for joining more than Conquerors, because I was getting the word like I really was looking for it. Uh, Charles Williams. Uh, I've been with the church, I don't know, since its inception, about 42 years. Currently, I am the, uh, I'm an elder, uh, trustee, and chairman of the board of trustees. I guess some of the some of the best times I can remember were when we were smaller and crazier because we we probably had a lot more zeal then. We had a lot of folks. Uh, uh, Woodland Avenue is 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 the next stop after after uh, Long. And Woodland was, we enjoyed that. We, we, we used it out, uh, we maxed it out. George W. Stewart, and I've been a member of More Than Conquerors Faith Church for about 38 years, I think. 38, I don't know, I'm like Charles. <laughs> and I joined the first Sunday I went, and I've been there ever since. And the More Than Conquerors spirit was like, Hey man, we all in. You know, there are no boundaries. Most definitely, I went in, um, was working at the radio station and got a chance to uh, meet Pastor Steve by way of uh, Elder Dwayne Davis. I was gonna play hard to get. And uh, you know, I, the power of God moved on me on that Sunday, man. I saw something very, uh, energetic and I went up to somebody and said hey look I want to join so they reconvened some people and I joined that day and I'm so thankful that I did. My name is Jonathan Owens and I've been at church since I was a little kid all my life. I feel like with my generation it molded me like in order to be able to live the church lifestyle but be able to walk in it in public. But I feel like being at MTC gave me the love for church and God to where I, when I'm in public, God's still on my mind, church still on my mind, it's still a priority. Because with my generation, really don't, when you're out in public, they really don't speak on, you know, oh, I'm a believer of this, or I'm a believer of that. It's just, uh, that's, hey, if I get a text from you going to church, oh, that's how I know you're a believer, like, 
back when, you know, your generation prime time, you had probably choir music, you know, Baptist songs, all that. Now you, with our generation, you get into gospel rap and, you know, more youthful songs. So like people like Elevation and, you know, folks like that, they're more youthful and kind of changing, you know, the way that we praise now. So I feel like that's what the change. My name is Gabrielle, and there is no place like Northern Conquerors. Casa Green has impacted me by giving me the, the encouragement that I need to find God for myself. I feel like he has helped me um, with my faith in a lot of different ways. I can talk to God anytime, you know, I can ask him about anything, just not just about you know, praying him, praying to him and asking him for things, but praying to him and thanking him for everything that he has done in my life. You know, I can do anything and that I can get through this because I have God on my shoulder. I dare not try to go on any larger stage without the Spirit of God. I dare not try to enlarge my personal territory without the Spirit. Angels are rejoicing. The day you were born, angels was over your bed before you came out of the womb. Uh, the angel, oh, y'all not gonna help. But you're not gonna get me now because I got a word from the Lord.